So our first keynote speaker, uh, most of you know him. He's been in the industry over 22 years, been robbing people and corporations for over a decade. He's a close friend, great road trip partner, gives the most awkwardest of hugs. So everybody, please give me, uh, help me welcome and give a round warm of applause to Jason Street. Thank you, my brother. Oh. Hugs. Yes, I am good to go. Yes. Hi, thank you for the introduction. As I said, I'm JC Street, or also known as the reason why everybody's running late uh, today. So my sorry, not sorry's right off the bat. I did actually prepare a little bit, so it's not as awkward. Well, I can't help but be awkward, but we'll try here. Right there, this goes there. Always here. Hi. There we go. I need to get something out of my purse real quick. Hold on. There we go. We got this here. And yes, I am presenting on this because it's awesome. And people don't expect you to rob people with this. So it's even more awesome. It's like. I'm telling you, you, go into a server room that doesn't allow computers, and like, oh, I'm just playing Soul Calibur with, on my child's Switch. No big deal. <laughs> I got a three-hour update. And then you leave the place and go like, I won. We're good. <laughs> there you go. Yay. So I'm incredibly nervous. This is going to be epic. Like, and I'm like, when I mean epic, I mean epically fail or we, I don't know which. It's like, because I've never done this one here, and that's like, a, we're going to F it and do it live, so bear with me. Uh, but this is my legal disclaimer. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, but I played one on the internet before, successfully. Um, and so when I talk about the bad things, or you see me doing something bad, or you see me doing bad stuff, you're going to be like, he's horrible. What a terrible person. Remember the kittens. I'm adorable, Okay. I'm not going to try to rob from you, steal uh, from you, or kill you unless you pay me first. There's always a contract, okay? It's like, I lie professionally. I don't do it for free, so I don't filter. Uh, it's like, and, and be prepared for that too, because trust me, people always think that I'm, I'm joking about that, and then they figure out like, oh, you, you found out. You shouldn't have effed around. There we go. So the name of this talk Hacker strip tease, peeling away the layers of physical compromise. Da da da. Start right there. Whew. Favorite part. Get the shoes off. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to just talk about like all the different kinds of personas that I use when I'm robbing people and some of the ways that I do physical compromise because I'm not, uh, you know, a big red team ninja dude. So I'm just this weirdo. Um, I don't like talking about myself, so just go to jcnewstreet.com. You find out more about me, hackeradventures.world, you know, uh, uh, shows you uh, where I've been. And at Jason Street on Twitter is my live journal or diary and dream journal all rolled into one. Unfortunately, sorry, not sorry, because, yeah, some of that stuff you don't want to see. I don't care. Um, but just I like riding motorcycles, educating reporters. It appears screaming at people which you'll, you'll see that later, uh, going and doing weird things in weird places, uh, robbed a bank at National Geographic, we'll see that a little bit later, love playing No Man's Sky, woohoo, like Spike, way to go, it's like uh, any of my other No Man's Sky, you know, fellow interlopers, yay, awesome, um, that, that's the most exciting part of the whole effing bio, to be honest with you, it's like, I, I, it's like Minecraft in space for old nerds, uh, I love building bases there, um, okay, that fun part's over, let me tell you about how much this industry sucks, um, so I am so tired of hearing stupid user clicked on a link, stupid user went to a website, stupid information security didn't properly train their users and trying to shift the blame all onto them. Humans are not the weakest link. They're the least invested in. It's like if you were running, it's like in investing in your technology and your defenses as you, as you invested in people, You'd have a Cisco PIX from 97 put into your thing with an ACL that's allow all, but no logging. And think you're secure with the Snort IDS with the default signatures on. That's exactly what you would have. The problem is we need to invest in actually teaching our users 
that they are responsible for a piece of equipment. When you give a delivery driver a van, you don't just hand them the keys, good luck, you know what to do. No, that's $60,000 piece of equipment. You make sure they're trained on it. You make sure they understand the rules. They understand the defense tech. Oh my God, I don't want to see everybody because then they'll see them judging me. It's like, uh, it's like, I mean, some of you are quite handsome and pretty, but it's like, you know, but still, no, nah, they're okay. Uh, so you don't, you don't want to get, you know, you don't see that whole distraction. It's like, and this is why we're running late. Thank you. Oh, not that dark. It's like, then I'm like a shadow shroud. It's like too close to Halloween for that. My gosh. Okay. Um, but yeah, you give them this equipment and you tell them, it's like, hey, you know, here's your, your blinkers, your defenses. Okay, we'll deal with that because I don't want to keep it light changing. It's like, and, and you, you, don't, you don't want them to like, you let them know what they're expected of them. We give a person a laptop and we're like, oh yeah, you know the rules. This is the policies. Have fun. If a person wrecks a van, you're out $60,000. That person's probably getting fired. How many people click on links that have cost companies over $350 million to target? <clears throat> but yeah, it's like, and we don't even bat an eye. They're jeopardizing and could potentially cost a company millions of dollars. And we're just like, yeah, it happens. We need to get better at showing our people what the real threats are because we're getting all the CCOs and, and CIOs scared about the APTs. Oh my gosh. It's like, I'm, I, we need spooky music, you know? Advanced, persistent, threats. Whew, right? It gives me chills. Well, I don't know how to do you know what, You know what APT really stands for? Because Let's face it, the only thing we use APT for is your CEO to tell the public and the shareholders that you got piped by an email, right? It's like, because APT actually stands for adequate phishing technique. <laughs> that is APT. <laughs> and it's like, but I want you to know, I don't do APT. It's like, I'm a high school dropout, used to behind a dumpster, ain't that fancy? You know, don't, don't let this fool you. It's like, no. I do bad, basic, adorable destruction. <laughs> I don't care about your compliance. I don't care about Sarbanes, Oxley, Grand Bleach, Liley, or any other old English white dudes. I don't care about any of those guys, hippo, hippo, hobos. I don't care. I'm just there to F you up in the worst possible way at the worst possible time it's like at the worst possible, I'm great at parties. It's like, trust me. It's like, that's all I'm there. I just want to go be a bad guy. So it's like, that's how I do it. And I show them exactly what a real threat li is like. And I love showing people what real threats are like so they get understanding. It's not that advanced. It's not that all this leak coding skill and all these tools. It's like, no. It's like, it's, this is how easy it is. I use one of the most, first of all, mostly every attack that I do involves the most dangerous hacking tool ever invented by man. It's like still in use today. It's don't, please don't say Cali. It's like, it's still the best, most latest hacking tool. I start with Google. Um, something you don't really know about me. It's like, I'm a nice guy. I try to be a nice guy or at least play one on the internet sometimes. I'm very petty. Ian Y you know, back in the day, because I didn't have a high school diploma and I passed all their other tests, they wouldn't hire me. I'm not saying I hold a grudge, but let's go hacking and wine, see if we can break into their building, okay? <laughs> Why not? Anybody from me and Y? Don't raise your hand, because also I don't care. I'm still going. Uh, so we're going to go after Ian Y. It's like, I want to physically, because this is about physical compromise, so how are we going to rob them? Well, let's find out where they're, they're stationed at. I had to go to the uh, New York office so, uh, once uh, for ENY for a class that I ended up finding a vulnerability in their MySQL server that was facing the internet that it got mad at me about. Still petty. So, you know, um, it's like, so yeah, so this is where they're located. It's like five times square. Now, and they've got their name on the building. Have you ever seen the Ernst & Young building in Times Square? It's like all lit up on the side, Ernst & Young, you know, Tony Stark wannabes. It's like, you know, but I got a question for you. They own that building, but do they manage that building? 
You think Tony Stark is out there, you know, collecting the rent off the Starbucks, making sure he's hiring the janitorial staff and the security for that building? No, because he's passed him. A moment of silence for him. <laughs> Hashtag too soon. It's like, miss you, Tony. It's like, so yeah, no, he doesn't do that. You get a building management company. Ernst & Young is all about security. Ernst & Young is all about the auditing and the numbers and not hiring very, you know, wonderful, adorable, scrappy young, you know, newbies. It's like, sorry, um, I digress. But yeah, that's what Ernst & Young is about. What does a building management company do? Like the originally named, you know, very original, five times square property management company? They're selling space. To them, it's all about getting that room, you know, getting, getting those offices filled up because they got to pay for the maintenance. They got to pay for the other thing and the electricity for that big flashy sign that they've got outside the building. So what are they going to do? Well, they're going to give potential clients a lot of information. Hey, you want to know where the Ernst & Young employees are probably going to be eating? Because they're not going down to Chinatown for that noodles, even if it's on the subway. It's like, no, they've got to be like within five minutes of the building because they're good employees. They're go-getters. You know, it's like, so it's like they're going to be like, you know, right nearby. Say at those restaurants right there where you can put up a box card reader, you can like, you know, actually do some pictures, figure out what their badges look like, you know, what the traffic looks like, you know, send some coupons for some discounts because everybody likes to, you know, a little bit of money off on something in a PDF. You, you do that. It's like, oh, hotels. Oh, you're visiting out-of-town employees, your executives. Oh, that's where they're going to be staying? Good to know. Can't do anything with that kind of information. Not at all. It's like, and then your neighboring officers, I don't care about them. It's like, I've used a, a, a neighbor's uh, uh, that was nearby in the same building to set an appointment with them so I could then just take the elevator down and not get escorted down, of course, because they don't. They just leave you at the elevator and just go one floor down and then rob the place. That was fun. Um, the blueprints? Seriously? I mean, if, you, if anybody who's ever here has worked at a bank, they're getting PTSD flashbacks. It's like, because that is terrifying to actually have the blueprints. And I mean, and they give it to you. I mean, I love this. This is all the public areas, you know, the main lobby and the concourse uh, below the building. I love how they highlight it because like, please pay attention to this area. And I'm like, no, you got like security looking all mean and intimidating. And like, you know, they're asking really mean questions like, you know, what are you doing here? Why do you have that computer? I don't want to answer those kind of questions. So I'm looking for the gray area. That's the good stuff, right? That's the stuff like, nothing to see here, nothing behind the curtain, right? Because that shows you where the loading dock is. That's where the freight elevator is. If you're using the, I mean, come on. Okay, I understand. The freight elevator, it does smell every once in a while, okay? And there could be a guy named Ernie and stuff there and there, which still gives me flashbacks, but that's fine. It's like, because that is the least protected area to get into the upper floors, but I don't know where the upper floors go. I don't know what their layouts are. And when you're trying to rob someone, you want to have a familiarity. You want to be walking someone questioning, like, what are you doing here? What's going on? Oh, I'm going to the electrical closet right down there to the right next to the main conference room. Oh, that sounds legit. Never been there before, but I don't have to be because I've got all the floor blueprints as well telling me where the electrical box is right next to the main conference room. So that helps. And once again, that dark, shaded area. Do not look here. This is not the access level you're looking for. You know, this is not the doorways that you need. It's like, well, my Jedi mind tricks don't work on me. It takes intelligence. I'm but also, it takes a wonderful building management company that included in their brochures the ungrayed out areas. So they exactly tell you exactly where everything's at. It made you work for it a little bit. And one of the things I love is this whole, first of all, y'all have basements in Utah? I'm so effing jelly of that. You know, I love all these idiots trying to like shame people like some hacker in their basement. But I would kill for a basement. <laughs> I would love to have a lab in a basement. I would totally be there. 
And I would call it my lair without shame. Okay? I didn't use some supercomputer with a whole bunch of screens with like, you know, two people typing on the keyboard to make myself leet. No. I had pizza and Diet Pepsi and a Panera Bread when I was hacking these fools. <laughs> Company, wonderful people at E&Y. Great, great, great auditing work. Uh, they're going to audit me, I'm, I can tell now. It's like, but yes. That's what I did. And the reason why I did it there is because I'm also doing it in your company's lobby, at your company's Starbucks or little cafe. So I can do that on that small little handheld device that doesn't look like a computer. And that's only got 16 gigs of RAM running Windows 11 and stuff, you know, with an i7 processor. It's like uh, with a one terabyte hard drive. Ugh. It's like I barely got anything done. That's why I love this thing because it's actually got 32 gigs of RAM, two terabytes of hard drive space, running an AMD Ryzen processor with a 6800 GPU. Much nicer. It's like, um, and, and, and also, it, oh my gosh, the graphics when you're playing No Man's Sky and Soul Calibur, but don't tell my CEO because he's the one that bought it because I do it for pen testing only. <laughs> it's like, uh, we'll go with that. Say nothing, Alex. Okay, good. Um, I forgot the coworker was here. Oops, <laughs> my bad. It's like, um, so yeah, so I use that. And I'm watching the traffic patterns. I'm watching to see what your security looks like, what, they're, what everybody's dressed like, what the badges look like. Maybe doing some Wi-Fi stuff, you know, because I like to act like I'm elite. It's like, oh, all that stuff. But I'm also using other means. I don't just Google. I'm not one trick pony. I'm also on Instagram. <laughs> you wanna know why people drink? Hashtag new badge search on Instagram. That's why we drink, okay? Maybe not here, but it's like a lot of people drink because of that. And it's like, and I love this. Ernst & Young was so nice to actually include a location tag for the Insta, you know, because you got to do it for the gram, right? I can, I don't have to be inside the building because I'm literally seeing pictures of inside buildings that I'm about to rob and seeing where their stuff is set up. Seeing where they're, they're uh, where the, go to their architect's website because they're very proud of the, the work they did inside the interior of these office buildings. And you can literally see where the conference room is, how the reception is, where the break rooms are because you always want to go to the break room first. Seriously, it's like you got to hit, hit the break room first. Uh, and so, and then you also see other pictures like. Who needs to do fingerprinting? It's like, of like an OS or what operating system are they using? What technology do they have? Oh, I've got Insta for that. They're using Windows Dell machines. It's like or Lenovo ThinkPads. They've got iPhones for their mobile devices or for their, their email carriers and stuff. You know, probably gonna be like some kind of iPhone app or iOS mail carrier. It's like, yeah, I've got all that down. No worries. It's like, and, and trust me, if that doesn't work, don't worry. That's what LinkedIn's jobs postings are for. You do a search for the job posting, what the company's hired, they're telling you what they're looking for, what architecture that you need to have, what coding you need to know, what technology that you need to use. And if that doesn't work, you just go to the people that are currently working there and you see what their skill sets are. Because you're not gonna get a person who is well-versed in Checkpoint and Fortinet and stuff, you know, and, and those two technologies and, you know, and, and McAfee and think like, oh, I wonder if they're wondering Kaspersky with Cisco Picks. No. It's like you're, you're basically telling you what, what they're running. But I mentioned the badges, right? Love the badges. That, 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 that one in the upper corner, upper right-hand corner is even better. You know why? Because it shows the key. Who here has 3D printed TSA keys? Lord knows I do. <laughs> Thank you, TSA. Homeland Security. We treat your physical security of your luggage like we want to uh, treat the encryption of your emails. But, you know, don't think about that too much. It's like, so yeah, it's like um, you got the, you can make a whole 3D print. I don't know how to do lock picking. You got Deviant for, for people that actually know, people that actually do that kind of stuff. I literally cannot lock pick to save my life. I use cardboard or a crowbar. Uh, but most times I just ask someone to let me in and they usually do it and that works for me. <laughs> but I love badges. I love badges. And you know what? It's like I love other people's badges because they show me what to print because I've got the Badgie 100. 
The only way this could be cooler is if it was named the Badgie 3000. <laughs> Seriously, from getting a picture off of Instagram in Boston, from getting it printed, it's like a friend's uh, you know, Badgie printer, 15 minutes. And yes, I used that exact badge. And they're like, yeah, but Jason doesn't have RFID. It doesn't have, you know, it's like you didn't uh, Proxmark clone or anything like that. And it's like, yeah, I love it when I don't do that. Because then I go up to the badge reader. I got a meeting in five minutes. Can we make something happen? You know? Hello, soup, important white person, look at me. <laughs> Plug in. <laughs> hey, if you don't have white, the only, the only reason why you should be using white privilege is to be telling people how bad and horrible it is, right? Uh, seriously. So I'm like, yeah. It's like, you know, use that. So another thing, and I get this a lot from people. It's like, especially my detractors, you know, there's, there's plenty. It's like, you're not that technical, Jason. You're not that... You, you've not done any like skills. You're like, you, you don't really red teaming stuff. You like to act like it. I'm like, yeah, exactly. I'm not that technical. I don't know how to code. I've never heard how to code. It's like, literally, I would say that if you looked in the dictionary and, and if you looked at imposter syndrome in the dictionary, you'd see my picture, but I don't think I'm good enough to actually be in the dictionary under that, okay? <laughs> it's like, so yeah, so no, I'm not technical. But let's ask a question. It's like, do you think your company's as secure as a bank is trying to guard money? Especially from some loser like me that's just going to walk in off the street. Well, let's do this little friendly thing. Let's actually look at a video of me robbing a bank in Beirut, Lebanon. Unedited, exactly the way it's going to work. And it's like, this is an unedited video. It's eight minutes. And we're going to see how long it takes for me from walking into the front door to compromising my first machine. Here we go. Walk in. And I love right off the bat, look at that lady. She, she did such everything so right, so wonderful. She knew I was sketchy AF as soon as she saw me. <laughs> she knew I was up to no good. Oh, look. Wait, hold on. Oh, 15 seconds. Uh, between walking in the front door and compromising the first machine, if that was what your answer was, you won. Uh, that's 19 seconds, 20 seconds. It's actually executing the code, running the payload in around 22 seconds, saving it, finishing it in 25. I have completely compromised one machine in under 30 seconds. That took a lot of technical know-how to do. And I love the fact that she stops me. Wait, hold on. I forgot. Hold on. There's a... I, I'm not professional by nature. It's like... Uh, there we go. Can you hear the, the sound? There you go. I'm here to do the USB audit. She's doing wonderful. She's asking me questions. She's challenging me. But I'm in an assertive role. I'm doing a USB audit. I don't know what a USB audit is, but I do a lot of them. And they're very successful. No problem. That sounds When she challenged me, I was literally taking the offensive. You need to call headquarters. Didn't headquarters are you? I wasn't cowering or acting like I was okay. caught okay. or the jig was up. Uh, but look what she does. I'll she takes me to the manager, which is exactly what she could do, but then she made the one mistake. Bonjour. I let her go. I said, I'll stand by, because she thought I was honest. I'm not being honest. So then I switched to a passive row as a helper, and I compromised the bank, uh, yes. bank manager's machine. because I went from assertive and now faster. I'm in the passive role. And I'm trying to make the network faster. Okay. You could be on a T3 line through Can fiber to your you desktop. You ask someone, is the network running slow? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Well, I'm here to make it faster. Mother, what do you need? And do you have a network server here too as well? I was like, hey, center? let's go oh, for the gusto, right? Let's break into the data center. <laughs> I mean, I'm here anyway, right? That's my trusted agent because I'm doing a security awareness engagement. I'm not doing red team. So, and I'm telling him to step the back because he's way too close because he can't believe what's going on either. I'm like, you and me both, bud. It's like, you and me both. 
So, and this is unedited, because I don't want you to think that I try to cut and paste it and make it look cooler, so sorry for the butt cam. This is a, a hidden uh, camera and a button uh, from the National Geographic show that wasn't used that Darren Kitchen acquired somehow. I ain't asking questions. And so I'm showing you. And here he goes, he does the, you know, he does the, the code, which is super secret, that I could never have shoulder surfed and told you what it was. I think it was his kid's birthday. And he opens up the, the server room. Now, uh, I said, here, let, will you let me stay here unattended? Okay, thank you. Listen. Hold on, listen. That was a side defeat. I want them to do good. I'm an advocate, not an adversary. I'm trying to root for the guy. But, but then I remembered something. Wait, that mother, he's my golden ticket. I don't want to be too far from him. That lady may question him because she was doing a lot of good stuff. So she may question him. It's like, I got to catch up with him. It's like, no, don't leave my side, bud. We still got to go to do the teller line. I would run over and talk to you guys over there, but it's like, I would fall down and, and it would be funny, but it would not be constructive. So I'm thinking about you right here. It's like, so now I'm behind the teller line. Yep, that's not good for somebody. I mean, me, it's perfect. I'm having a great day right now. That looks good. Whew. But this part was so rude. And they're usually very hospitable. What kind of employee locks their workstation? How am I, how am I supposed to rob them? Uh, this is how not, rude. Not on. But that's okay. The manager went and got the employee so he could come over and, and, and unlock the workstation for me. Whew, that was close. I'm trying to go for 100% here, people. I'm sorry, I'm limited with my French. So I always tell people, I always try to like, you know, because uh, Lebanon, they speak, you know, French, Arabic, and English. Most countries speak, you know, two or three languages. I tell people, like, I'm from America. I only speak one language. I'm from Texas. I don't speak it very well. But I do what I can. English was better than my Chinese. So it's like, what are you going to do? But now we're going to go to the vault. It's not that big, shiny metal thing that they like to make it look like in the movies. Now we're in the vault with the most powerful person in the bank. Yep. Let's just plug this in real quick. You know why? Okay. Yeah, Ooh. that's the one doing the wire transfers. So in the way. That's where the money is. That's where the money's being transferred. Oh, and she was in the middle of a wire transfer when I interrupted her. My bad. Oops. Because there it goes executing right there. And I'm like, oh, I sh maybe I shouldn't have plugged it in right then, but yeah, too late now. Yeah. LOL. Okay. There we go. Payload's done. Okay. And I'm like, well, you this was unexpected. I really appreciate your help. It's I'll a, take it. <laughs> unexpected. Thank you. And as we're walking out, I remembered one important I, thing. I good. I think I've got everybody. I'm petty I'm AF. In the data center, so. Oh, I didn't get her machine real quick. Right. I forgot no. to get the one person who stopped me. Sorry, I want to be thorough. On these engagements, I'm being paid okay. to be a horrible person. Remember the kittens. So of course I have to compromise her machine, but this time with the manager behind me, okay, making okay. sure she does it. The only person I have felt bad in engagement okay. in a very long time was her because she was a model okay. employee. She did everything done. the correct way. And done. Except for she yeah. didn't talk to the manager and explain, oh, hey, there's there's weird, you know, American dude, you know, wanting to talk okay. to you. And I'm not, I don't know what he's doing. Because she thought he was going care. to bet me. Great. Thank you. He thought she vetted me, and no one vetted me. And this sums it up pretty well, right here. How the, did that just happen? I don't, I don't know. I was more surprised than anybody else. But I mean, I will have to admit, there was no Python tutorial, so luckily I was able to avoid capture, you know, and I didn't have to use Ruby or, you know, my Metaspoil, uh, Metasploitable shells and everything. I didn't have to use any of that stuff, you know, thank goodness, or I would have been in trouble. Uh, it wasn't needed. I will show you this one tool that I found that I used. It's like on this next engagement. Don't worry, this is much quicker. Notice I'm coming from the public area. 
but I don't walk directly to the teller line because they're going to be suspicious because I came straight from the outside. So I hide behind this column. There's a lady on the phone behind me, and I wait there for just a few seconds, and then I walk from the private area where that lady's desk was, like I had to talk to her, and I just walk right behind the teller line. I go to the very last machine, make sure they see me, go out of my way to say hello, because I'm a polite robber, okay? <laughs> I've got manners. I'm from the South. It's like, so there we go. I plug into the first machine. That is not plugged in or turned on, but I'm establishing a pattern. So when I go to the next machine, which is hers, I'm just like, pardon, I have to plug this in. There you go. Do a USB audit. Another one of those. <laughs> Merci beaucoup, because, you know, polite, and I speak French, not really. And then this lady was not having it. She was a little busy. I already read it in her body language, so I just did what any good bank robber does. I spin in the chair uh, till she's available. And she's like, I, I, I'm, I'm busy. I'm doing work. I'm like, oh, that's okay. I'm just doing one quick thing, uh, robbing you. Don't, don't mind me. <laughs> it's like, uh, it won't take but a moment. There it goes. Thank you. So nice. And look, as I'm leaving. It's like, you know, we all, all ended up smiling. They're smiling. I'm smiling. Everybody's smiling. It was a very positive experience for a robbery. <laughs> and, and then the lady that was on her phone, I'm now coming from the teller side, which is the private side for her, the non-public side, and I was able to take her machine as well. And the only reason why I was able to manage that was because of that column. If I would have walked in directly from the front of the building, people subconsciously would have not trusted me as much because they knew in the back of it. See, I, literally, I, I was not, this is not something that I was taught. This is something I've adapted over my life as being someone on the spectrum and having to deal with like horrible people a lot in my younger years. You have to read human nature because seriously, normal people frighten the f out of me. It's like, and so I had to start learning what human nature was like and what normal people were supposed to be like. And I was like, so I could learn to either avoid or to mimic and stuff, you know? So I could, you know, mask me like, oh, I'm that guy. Yeah, I'm what you're looking for. It's like, you know, don't hurt me. We're good, right? And so, and that's what I've learned on human nature. And that's what I use to attack your companies. It's like I'm using human nature against them. Those natural things that you think about in the back of your head, but you don't really think about them, you just operate with them. So after that, the question was, you know, you sure hope so, but maybe not really. Because I'm not attacking your network technology or zero days to get in. I'm just attacking your people. Because we're not empowering them and educating them enough on what a real threat's going to look like and just to basically question someone if they come and say they want to do something with their machine. Well, I don't want to be rude. What? It's 2022, seriously? Have you been on a plane lately? <laughs> it's like, you don't have to be rude. You don't have to tackle the person. I'm fragile, I bruise easily. That might be me, don't tackle. But you have to ask questions. Are you supposed to be here? Call security, call information, let them know to call you and say, hey, there's someone sketchy AF here. I think we need to do something about it. Because once again, I'm trying to put them at ease without them realizing it. This picture was taken one day apart. It's like one, the first day, I showed him the goatee, ungelled hair, your company's computer guy, you know? Cause you know, I thought it was funny and I come with warning labels. It's like uh, and a couple of devices to get out there. The next day, I'm in a, in a nice dress shirt. Oh, this one. I don't know what that means. It's like some flashy cufflinks, nice watch, gelled hair, shaved. Because I want them to think that he looks familiar. Can't really place him, but I think I've seen him before. It's put in the back of their head. But also, notice the most important element of those pictures. It's effing snowing outside. I am freezing every, you know, thing horribly. I am cold. 
Why do I not have a jacket on? Is it because I'm an idiot? Don't answer that. <laughs> no, because once I break into the company, spoiler alert, I did. It's like once I do that, if I still had my parka on, because that's what I need, I'm from, remember, Texas, it's like, it's like, wouldn't I be a little suspicious? Wouldn't I stand out walking around inside your hallways with a big winter jacket on? But if I don't have a jacket on, if I'm wearing short sleeve shirt inside a company while it's snowing outside, then that means I must have put my jacket up somewhere. That must have meant that I'm here and I'm like, I put that in the office and I'm doing a day's work. And that's not something you think about. But now that I said it, you go, oh, the weirdo's got a point. And I'm like, yeah. That's just human nature. So let's go over some of the layers I use. Layer two is the assertive role, you know? It doesn't mean aggressive. I've been aggressive in, in certain countries. It's like, especially uh, in some European countries, being assertive actually helps. It's like, what part of surprise inspector do you not understand? I need it in the server room, I need it now, and if you don't wanna be on the report, that's going to happen. Don't you think so? Mother, been here. It's 3 a.m. my time. I don't need this. Please. And they let you in. And I lied. I still put them on the report. But it's like, <laughs> so, um, but usually the mannerisms are like this. It's like when I used in the bank, when I was being challenged, I didn't like go, oh, no, I don't know what I'm, I don't know. No, I challenged back. Didn't you get a message from uh, headquarters? I'm supposed to be here. I'm doing the USB audit. I was challenging. I was being assertive. I'm doing an audit role. It's like, and the hardware I have to use has to be a little bit more discreet uh, because the better discreet it is, the better chances you are of getting it. And then it's like, it helps if you're dressing for the role, right? I love this. You know what this is? This is the business suit of doom. I called it the business suit of doom because it's hand tailored for my tailor in uh, Beijing, Peter, wonderful guy. Uh, can't go back to China anymore, but uh, long story. But it's like, uh, but I, I love my suits because it makes me look fancy. And also the best part about these suits is when I was trying to explain to Peter what I wanted. And when I was telling him, he said, are you a magician? And I'm like, no, Peter, I'm not a magician. It's like, because a magician, you always hear them, they say, nothing up my sleeves. And Peter, didn't I specifically tell you to actually put pockets in my sleeve so I could like carry a Bash Bunny 2 or some other device in the sleeve? Because is it practical? No. Is it cool? Yes. So yeah, Peter, I'm not, I'm not a magician. I'm a bank robber. It's like, or hacker, or, you know, pen tester. So yeah, so you gotta love those. You gotta love my pockets, right? And I, and, but also, he makes me fancy. And I love being fancy every once in a while, okay? It's like, spoiler alert, okay? Hoodies are cool and comfortable, okay? But I like being fancy. And, but when you make me wear a time of, I'm going to wreck you, okay? And that doesn't even cost extra. You made me wear a tie. You're going to pay for that. It's like, but that's okay. It's like, but hey, I can accessorize still. Do you see the three hacking devices there? Well, I mean, the pin's sort of easy right here. That's sort of easy. Video camera pin. I'm a walking, talking Google streetcar on these engagements. Yeah, that, that, that's fine. It's like, but what about, ooh, I got a couple of these. This one I love is 16 gig USB hard drive with a high depth video camera with infrared, but you unscrew that, plug in the cable, download 16 gigs of your data, which probably wouldn't do any harm to your network, right? 16 gigs of your proprietary information. And I walk out with it because, you know, screw you, Snowden in your Rubik's Cube. It's like, yeah, it's like, I do that. That's cool. I like that. It's like, because it's fancy. But where's the other hacking tool? I made sure all my shirts are French cuffs. 
One, because of fancy. And two, because of cufflinks, like this one. Here we go. Like this one. Like this one. I ain't, it's coming off. Okay. That, that is a threat. It's like, but, okay. Okay. There we go. Hey, anybody need a wireless USB adapter plugged into your server? No, not at all. Are you going to get one? Yes, definitely. But, you know, some of those servers are not very cooperative, you know, or some of those machines aren't very cooperative. That's why you have a two gig USB drive that actually has all the wireless adapters for Windows, Linux, and, and Mac uh, there, and maybe a command and control or two, you know, just for fun. Uh, so I turn your CEO's desk or your server to, into my actual wonderful, you know, what's that called? Command and control center. Yeah, that's it. And router. <laughs> Those are fun. So yes, it's like I like that. You can get them on Amazon, I think, still. But you know what I love about this jacket the most? It's got pockets. <laughs> Ladies, don't hate me, okay? I don't know why Western society is women can't have pockets and men can't wear purses because I effing love my purse. It's amazing. It's like, the only, the only problem is if I can't get a bigger purse because then you got to have the word tactical in front of it. And it's like, uh, so it's like, and it's got to like have all the patches, all the slashes. And I just like something like small that just carries enough, you know, hardware to actually do damage. Uh, and I love all, look at all those devices. Are you not intimidated and entertained? <laughs> How many of those devices do you need, Jason? None of them hardly, but it looks cool. You ever seen those movies with those assassins and hitmen and that invisible wall goes away and you got all these racks of guns and knives and uh, nunchucks and crossbows and all these different daggers and cannons and, and it, let me get this 38 right here. Bam. Okay, we're ready. Let's go. <laughs> so that's, that's my assassin wall right there or couch. It's like, I guess. It's like, yeah, but I, I, do, have, I do carry some things, you know, it's like just to like to show that I can carry things. So I got a little drop box here, uh, you know, that acts as like Wi-Fi pineapple. It's like the Wi-Fi pineapple light. Don't tear and tell Darren that it's like a bootleg. Uh, then I've got like, oh, hold on, do I got something else in here? Oh, another drop box, much smaller, much horrible and scary. That's good. What else do I have in here? Ah! Oh, hidden camera. So you just place that in the in the library on the shelves and stuff, you know, so you can. Uh, take some uh, uh, CEOs, type in on the, the passwords if you don't use the, the keyboard. And I have, oh, don't I look smarter now? <laughs> Video camera, okay. Um, and then we got nice little old school rubber ducky because uh, that looks very intimidating. Why would I have it like that? Uh, another bash bunny. There was a cell. Oh, Another little microcomputer as a little Game Boy. Yes, this did work going into a server. This is the original one, uh, the original GPD I used to break into a server once because I was playing a Nintendo kind of DS knockoff and the guy let me in because it was a three hour update. Uh, I didn't take three hours. It was, I was able to rob them in less. Uh, oh, um, I'm not good with the whole lock picking thing, remember? So when I want to steal a laptop, I just use these things very poorly. Takes me like, you know, way, Devi and I'm sure can just like look at them, go like, work, and unlock it. Me, it takes a little bit longer. So I got these little things to, to take the laptop because they like to think they're secure. Ooh. I ain't waiting. There we go. Take this off. Is there anything? Ooh, I feel something else. Where's that? Where, where, where? Oh, the snap pocket. Voice recorder. Leave that line around somewhere. And oh! Oh my gosh, I would have felt so embarrassed if I forgot my Wi-Fi uh, keystroke logger and injector. Thank you, Darren, again. It's like, so I can inject keystrokes into a, a machine or just record them and wirelessly translate them to my car out in the parking lot. Or the screen grab. I love that. 
because it's got HDMI. You know, most of the, the, the people don't get HDMI monitors, right? Because those are fancy. The CEOs do. You plug this one side into the CEO's monitor, the other side uh, uh, into the output, and guess what? I'm now copying everything that your CEO is writing on the screen or looking at on the screen. And either I'm taking screenshots, recording it through video, putting it onto a micro SD card, or I'm just transmitting it wirelessly uh, to my location so I can look real time and see what it is. Better than soap operas. So yeah, I got that. What the? That was unexpected. Okay, we're gonna keep this on for right now, but I finally get to take this off. So now we're gonna look at another layer, right? We wanna go to the passive layer. What is the passive layer about? Well, the passive layer is where I'm gonna go and be a help desk person. It's like, you know, oh, I forgot to, I also have like, you know, phone, some other gadgets, iPhone. Oh, I, I forgot I had this like pocket. I'm not packing heat, I'm packing exploits. Don't, everybody don't get nervous. It's like, got another Bass Bunny. Got a couple OMG cables. Oh my gosh, these are amazing because each of these are microcomputers with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi that can do remote code injection. Uh, from your hotel room, uh, which is nice, uh, especially because you get room service. Uh, Shark Jack, where I don't even need a computer, I just plug this into your conference uh, network jack. And this was just cool that I built, I got somewhere like, I don't know if it was a cash or something. It was just cool because it's got a micro SD card hidden in there. Uh, it doesn't do exploits, I just thought it was cool. Uh, and I put it in there, ah, there we go. I also have Andrew Lemon's business card, one of the most best business cards ever. And I'm giving him a shout out because his Business card is actually the little door shim so I can just open up the door. Because that doesn't, I can handle this. This kind of lock picking, I can, in. You know, or I'm sorry, hacker voice, I'm in. There we go. <laughs> now, whew, let, what does the passive role look like? Well, the passive role, you know, is gonna look like a worker, right? I'm gonna be a worker, showing up in my jeans, coming out, here to work on the server, here to work. Okay, okay, sorry, I digress. Y'all don't wanna see that either. There we go. Whew. Got my Microsoft badge, it says hacker on it. I got another one that says Gregory D. Evans on it. It's like, uh, I know, still, still too old, but yeah, I'm old. I, you know what the best part about this badge is? Anybody here work for Microsoft? Don't, don't answer, it's, it'd be embarrassing. This is their old badge that I was able to acquire and give it. Someone actually tweeted out the new badge. But I've never, and I've got a copy of their new badge printed out. But why bother? No one cares. I still use the old badge and I get in everywhere with it. So sorry about that guys. But with this, I've got something else. The clipboard of doom. Dun, 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 dun. Is there anything more fearsome, more terrifying than a checklist? <laughs> oh, you don't think so, huh? Good to know. Right? I got my clipboard of doom. And sorry once again, but it's got pockets. <laughs> can, can get some other stuff in there. One of the things I love the most though, oh my gosh, look at this. Oh, the best physical compromise device in the industry. There has been nothing better since its invention. No, I'm not talking about the OMG cables. Those are cool. MG cables are cool and everything. I love them. Uh, they're fine. Envelopes. Envelopes with a red marker. Because I'm in your, your secret area. I'm in your secured area. And there's offices and desks and cubicles that are unattended. But you see their name. Really? So I go over there. And I just write down that person's name on the envelope. I take one of my little malware USB devices. And 
I put that on their desk and I walk away. Which one of your employees are not going to come back to their desk with a sealed envelope with their name on it in red and a USB drive and not plugging it in? Exactly. I'm using human nature to do the work for me. But also, I'm like an ogre. I've got layers. It's like, so I've got another layer. Oops. Also got a jacket stuck. There we go. But yeah, I've got like the Wi-Fi pine oak, another screen crab, another camera. I've got like land turtles, Proxmart, and a whole bunch of other stuff that I hardly ever use ever. It's like, but it looks cool to have and it intimidates people and shows like, look, I could hack you with these things. Scared? Okay, those are good. So what else do I have? I love this. Every worker should have a nice flashlight, especially with a high-def video recorder in it. Spoiler alert, there's no one from Egyptian security. Is there in here? Okay. I literally was on a uh, speaker tour of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo where they do expressly forbid, you know, uh, videos and cameras and stuff. And so uh, I had like my, my spy watch, uh, my spy cameras like these, and the battery ran down. So by the time I got to Tutankhamun's exhibit, and oh my gosh, it's amazing that they, I mean, well, first of all, it's amazing they still got all that stuff that, you know, the uh, colonizers didn't steal from them. But it's like, it's like, it's amazing some of the artwork that you see in there. It's like the British Museum would raid it in a heartbeat. It's like, but I didn't have any other thing, so I had to use the flashlight. And I was literally doing like this, and security was like, excuse me, you can't turn that flashlight on, no light. And I'm like, oh, don't worry, I'm not turning the light on. I'm subtle. Ask anybody who doesn't know me. There you go. And then, of course, I've got another USB uh, pin. Uh, this has got a laser pointer because it's cool. Uh, my friends from Telespace gave it to me. Uh, I only use it to, for the USB drive to, like, you know, put stuff on it and scare people. Um, this one, oh, I forgot I put, well, I don't know why I put that in there. Uh, this is a device, if, if when, I, when we're talking petty to the next level, uh, if someone steals any of my devices in my bag, uh, I have devices like this. And what it does is it just builds up an electrical current and destroys anything you plug it into because you shouldn't steal my stuff. That is bad, okay? <laughs> Stealing is bad. Wait, <laughs> unless you're paid for it. Unless there's a contract. Let me, make, let me make that clear, okay? But then we get to the OMG layer. Oh my gosh. I find myself using the OMG layer way too much, okay? And that's just because uh, I have ADHD and, and I don't adult very well. Uh, don't judge me. Uh, so, yeah, when I'm doing the, uh, the OMG layer, uh, one time I was in Kingston, Jamaica, and I literally went in as a TV executive to hack this one. Thank you. It's like I used once. I used a, uh, the TV producer to break into a charity organization in Kingston. It was very embarrassing because I felt so bad about doing it, but I was being paid to be a horrible person. But my favorite is when I rob hotels because I'll run into a hotel fully clothed, go into the men's restroom, stay in there for about two hours. Don't judge. It's like, and then I take my clothes off and it's like, and then I roll up the shirt and the jeans and the shoes and the socks, and I stick them under the sink, and now I'm a guest. Now I'm a hotel guest just robbing your hotel. And that favorite picture is that one in the upper right-hand corner. That's me and Jean Capferrat uh, at a hotel overlooking the, the water. That was the dump they put me in because they couldn't only afford to put me into their actual hotel for one night. So they put me in that low rent place right there it's like for the rest of the nights I was there uh, breaking into them. And I literally went in. It's like I told the guy I was jet lagged. like, I'm just jet lagged. I'm going to go walk around the grounds. I did that. Found it, uh, the underground entrance, which is like, that's where all the good stuff is underground. It's like, you know, basements. It's like, and so I go in and I start doing that. And now I need to leave. So now I just go to the, the, the uh, room service guy, you know, the late night room service guy. And I'm like... <sighs> Bonjour. Um, I'm, I'm not supposed to be here. 
Touche. Elevator. I <laughs> But, but, uh, sacri sacri excuse me, moi? I flustered him so much, he put me in the employee elevator, which let me out onto the first floor into the management offices. As I was walking out, I found the, a computer that was unlocked in one of the offices with the hotel master keys. Did I mention it was a five-star hotel? They provided everything. It's like, and then I just walked out from behind the desk going, hey, hi, how's it going? I'm, I'm, I'm good now, and just left. Uh, that was fun. Uh, that, I have to carry a little bit smaller devices. You know, it's like, uh, usually like, I got the new, you know, rubber ducky. It's like, this one's like the newer one. So it's got like USB-C too, because that's the cool stuff, Apple. Um, and it's like, it's got the, you can put the payloads on there, OS detection, really nice device. And, and let's be honest, this is where I do most of my attacking with. It's like, also, if things are really bad, you got a, you got a phone, you can call for help. Okay. It's like, uh, I'm not going to tell you what the name of this phone is. It's sort of implied. Uh, there it goes. And then I've got, and I love this because it's got, it's, all this is is a disposable micro SD card, USB card reader. You know why? Because you put a two terabyte hard drive in it, a uh, micro SD card, and then you go and get, there, it's, there it is. And you get this little boy right here. What are you doing? Plug that out there. Plug that open. And then there is your micro SD card that you can walk out of the company with. Right there on the necklace. That's cool. It's like so, and then you just discard the, the micro SD card. You don't keep that with you because you don't want to be found with that and that because then they're going to be looking for a micro SD card. And trust me, that could get uncomfortable. <laughs> so I guess what we're trying to say is if I do find a way in, and I usually do, it's like uh, I love the lower right one because I can't do that anymore. That was me climbing seven stories above the Nicosi Cypress out of a window right over the sheer drop just because the guy said I couldn't and I didn't like that uh, and showed how I could bring him to a server room. And then I made him take the camera out of my jacket and take the picture because petty. So then make sure your employees know how to respond once I'm there because that's the important part. How, how long have I been going? Oh, wow. Okay. I'm doing, I can actually show you some of the defensive stuff now. Because usually it's like this time I've run so long, I'm like, okay, I would love to tell you how to defend against this stuff, but I got to go now. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> it's like, y'all acting like I haven't done that. It's been very awkward. So here, you don't just warn your employees, you show them. Stop giving them 10 question, multiple choice every quarter and thinking that you've done your security awareness engagement. Gamify it. Make them engaged in it. Make them try to... Uh, my friend Ben Tin actually showed me a game that one company was doing where they did no, uh, Where's Waldo every quarter. Every quarter, an employee would be given a badge that was exactly like their ID badge with the same exact privileges, same exact code, everything, except for they replaced the person's picture with Waldo. And the first person that detected it got a reward. Do you think people started paying attention if people were wearing their badges or not? Yes. Do you think people cared about security more? No. <laughs> but there was something in it for them now. They knew what to look for. They were engaged. Show them these kind of attacks. Show them what you can find on social media about your CEO, because who doesn't love showing the CEO and finding stuff about it? I mean, make sure you remember, like the CISSP tells you, upper management buy-in is very important, okay? It's like, especially when you're doing that, because we call that a career-limiting move. Uh, it's like, so yeah, but make sure you're using examples that they can relate to. Also, interact with your employees when things aren't on fire. How many people look at security and think that they're, but the people that are just looking at them to find out what they did wrong. If you only interact with your employees when something bad is going on, what are they, why would they come to you when something bad actually happens? So there's a new iOS, uh, iOS iPad update. 
you know, yesterday or today? Did you send out an email company-wide letting them know they can update their iPad? You don't have to tell them about the security part. Tell them there's new emojis or something. I don't know. That usually gets them. But let them know when there's a new Android update or an iOS update, when the FBI actually did something decent and actually sent out a, a thing about the D-Link routers and stuff. Let your employees know that. Let them think about security. Let them be security conscious. Let them know that you're not there just to make them fail or catch them when they're doing wrong, but you're there to help secure the company and make sure they are secure. Do lunch and learns. Involve yourself with the employees, just not when something bad is going on. Because when they accidentally click a link, they'll call you in five minutes instead of you finding out in five months. It's like because, you know, your solar winds. It's like that's not good. So, and also this whole nonsense of chasing O-days. Seriously. There was a, a, a survey like in 2015 or something like that where they said 89% of vulnerabilities were over a decade old. People talking about like, you know, we got to catch the low-hanging fruit. You know, we got to go after the low-hanging fruit. And I'm like, the fruit's on the ground. Get a wheelbarrow. Pick that stuff up first. You ain't ready for the tree. No fruit for you from there. We need to act. You talking about like zero days and zero trust. How many people know how many machines are on their network right now? How many people in this company do proper asset management? This is my judgmental look. And I'm looking at you. Well, and you too, because definitely. Um, so this is one of the key things we need to do. The three E's. I came up with myself because it's like three E's, you know. All right. Educate, empower, and enforce. You need to start educating your employees, letting them know what the real life kind of threats are like, but also educating them on what to do when they detect something suspicious. Why aren't you giving them an email address to forward a suspicious email to? Why aren't you giving them an extension number for them to call 24 seven when they find someone suspicious in the building? I robbed a place in Amman, Jordan, agreed with the manager the whole entire time I was there that I was not supposed to be there. She was like, you're not supposed to be there. And I'm like, you're right, I shouldn't be doing this. I, you should have heard from management because I shouldn't be able to do this to any of these computers. I mean, if you don't know why I'm doing this, then I shouldn't five times <laughs> with me agreeing with her. And I asked her when it was over because I don't do red teaming. I do security awareness engagements. It's teachable moments, not testing. It's like I don't give them losses. I give them lessons. And so after I finished an engagement, I will come back two minutes later and talk to every single person I compromised. Talk to that manager like, you knew I wasn't supposed to be there. Why didn't you call someone? Why didn't you have someone stop me? And she was like, no one told me what to do. No one gave me a number to call. I had no number for security. How was that her fail? How was that on her? That was on the security team. They caused that breach to happen. Well, I caused the breach to happen. But it's like, you know, they were responsible for not telling their employees what to do. We need to educate them. We need to empower them to do it. And mother, why aren't we enforcing it? How many links does Bob in accounting, sorry, Bob's in accounting people, does he get to click on before we realize Maybe he's the insider threat we're, we should be worried about. People looking for maliciousness instead of incompetence. If a van driver wrecks a van, they may get one warning. They wreck it three times. They're not working there anymore. Your computer is equipment that can cause millions of dollars of damage. Fire them if they keep clicking links, if they keep showing that they are a threat to your internal security. That's what guidelines and policies are for. Start enforcing them. Whew. <laughs> yep.
Y'all think I'm joking. I'm done. 